everybody. Yeah, my name is Jim Ng. Um, thank you for taking our time to attend this online seminars. Right. Um, yeah, I think it's a very chill day. But I just want to maybe take another one more minute because I still see people uh, trying to log in. Right. Today's sharing, majority of them will be from my own personal experience when I'm selling or buying landed property. Right. So I hope I can add value to all of you here. Right. In case if you are looking for a landed property right now, especially the older house, what are the things that you can, you have to take note, right? So that you are not uh, eventually end up paying, you know, a lot of money, right? To rectify the fault or the applying or compliance to the government ruling and so on, right? So that will be majority of my sharing this evening. And it's not going to be very long. But I promise you will add value to you. I'm sure, especially if you are the first timer who come into a lender property segment, this sharing will definitely help you to understand what are the things you have to look out for. Right. So I hope you all will enjoy uh, along the way. Right. In case if you have any question, feel free to ask me uh, after the, the set sharing. Right. Or if not, we have a list of panelists. Uh, inside here, standing by for all of you, right, to answer all the questions that you might have along the way, right? So don't be afraid of asking questions, right? Just ask. We have a list of panelists. They are all very experienced realtor, salesperson, or if not, some of them are even lender property owners, right? So they will be able to help answering all your queries, right? Yeah, I saw the number actually increased very fast, right? So after circuit breaker phase two, right now we are able to go out and visit uh, whatever unit that you're uh, interested to find out, right? I think you can make appointment, everything is by appointment, especially the new projects, right? For the resale lender market, yes, agents are out there, right? They are arranging with the owner already to start showing unit to all of you, right? So it can take times to go through. Um, during the weekend or if not, I don't know, some of the day that you find you have some times, right? So today my topic will be like seven things. So I put together some of the very important items that I felt, right, it's very important in case if you are going for older house. But of course, if you are going for new house, then all this ruling will not be applicable to you because whatever need to be done or need to be taken care of, right, the developer already, rectified or compliance to all the rule and regulation, right? So the seven things, but of course, out of these seven things, there might be some other things that are also important, right? But I will pick up those that I find um, is relevant. And I think definitely you have to know, right? Because I bought an old lender property before and I know what other thing that definitely will cause you headache moving forwards if you are not aware. Right, it might cost you tons, hundreds of thousands of dollars to rectify. Right, so without further ado, yeah, I saw the number already. Um, yeah, picking up very fast. Right, okay, I'm going to do my sharing. Uh, yeah, give me a second. I uh, just adjust the camera. <laughs> okay, good. I think we are good to go, right? Very good evening to all of you who are out there listening to me. Right, my name is Jip Ng and what is my sharing? Okay, hold on now, the screen stopped for too long. It doesn't move, all right. This is the normal things, all right? Okay, right, so I only have one objective to achieve tonight, right? For all of you out there, I am trying to help you to avoid some of the hidden costs and unnecessary problems when buying your landed property, right? So all this knowledge, I think is very important and out there, not many people are sharing, right? And all this information, a lot of it, you only are able to obtain from your architect if you do have one, right? If not, um, landed property is unlike condominium, right? Condo, you buy airspace. After that, you don't have to worry about whatever rule, you just do your own internal renovation. Right, there's an MCST to help you to comply to everything, right? But come to lender property, I think it's everything on your own, right? So if you are not aware of certain items, certain departments, 
that um, there are basic requirements and there are restrictions, then I think it will cost you a lot of money to rectify the fault, right? So without further ado, let me just maybe a bit brief on myself, at least you know who are you listening to, right? My name is Jim Ng, I'm a senior group district director with Propnex Realty, right? More than 20 years helping home buyers and sellers fulfilling their real estate dreams. Right? I'm also a team leader in Propnex, appointed trainer in lender property segment and in project marketing as well, right? I'm also a consumer seminar speaker, right? what I'm doing right down to all of you, right? And these are some of the picture taken from the consumer seminars, right? And definitely, I think I have to put a bit of disclaimer here, right? Whatever I'm sharing with you tonight is basically for education and discussion purpose, right? You don't take my, my, my sharing and then you could invest something if you cost you any losses, we are not holding any responsibility, right? I'll try my best to share as accurate as possible, Right, so the, this presentation is not in any way intended to provide investment advice. I think that's very important. You buy, you, you have to still have to do your homework, right? And uh, definitely, like, Promnex should have no liability for any loss or expense whose whatsoever relating to investment decision decision made by you, right? So I hope you also don't do any recording or. Don't do any photo taking on the material that I'm going to provide to you. Just focus on my sharing and I hope you really have some takeaway and I really hope that you are able to uh, find your dream landed home eventually and uh, do remember the points that I'm going to share with you later on. Right, so without further ado, I'm going to start my sharing. Right, are you ready? Okay, so why lender property? Right, because I think Lender property has performed very, very strong as compared to uh, condominium or apartment segment, right? You can see there's a huge gap between lender and apartment after certain years, right? So that is something, yeah, really very impressive for lender property. Yes, right. And which day or which year do you think that the lender property price has appreciated a lot, a lot as compared to condominium? I think from the chart here, this is from 1995 all the way until 2019, right? So this will be the overall conventional lender property transaction, right? As you can see from 2003, if you buy a lender property in 2003, today, your asset actually double up, right? More than 200, almost 200% increment since 2003. And this is a killing part, right? especially from 2010 onwards, that year until 2013, right? If you are in the market or if you are in the market hunting for property, right? The three years, within the three years, maybe landed property climbed so much faster than as compared to condominium, right? And that actually set landed price very far apart from condo, right? It's only the three years time frame, right? And if you compare the non lender you can see the appreciation is actually lower than landed property. There's a reason why more and more people are coming into the landed property segment if they are able to afford one, right? I think this is one uh, type of property whereby if you have money to invest or to put in, uh, this is something very safe uh, in longer term, right? Because of our very limited stock, as you can see from my screen here, right? So landed property in the past from 2012, we can see the available units Right, 2012 is 70,000, right? When it comes to 2018, which is eight years later, it's only increased by about 3,000 units, right? Eight years, 3,000, I think there's a very minimum uh, numbers if you look at it. And if you are going to compare to condo, you will see a huge difference, right? You see, 200, you need 200,000 and become 300,000 almost, right? 100,000 versus 3,000, increment between a condo and a landed. That is the kind of number that we are talking about, right? And in the pipeline, even in the planning, right? Landed property, how many? 1,000 units in 2018, right? As compared to condo, we have like 40,000, 50,000, 60,000, 70,000, right? So every, every time you can see the condo in the pipeline, 
next few years down the road, you will have about 50,000 as per now. I think it's about 50,000 plus minus, right? And, condo, uh, and compared to con, uh, landed, I think we have less than 1,000 units for sure in the market right now in the planning pipeline, right? Okay, so I also actually do up some chart to show you what is the correlation in terms of numbers between a landed property and a condominium. Right, so 2016, this is actually the numbers. Well, this number was actually taken from uh, Sing State Stack, right, which is the uh, official department to keep track of the number of uh, houses in Singapore. Right, so 74,000 versus 279,000. How about 2017? 2017, it dropped down, right, from 74,000. Hey, which category of property are able to drop down in terms of numbers? I thought every year there will be an increment in terms of number, but right, that should be the way, right? But for landed property, it's different. From, the number can come down over years, right? Why? You know, sometimes maybe, I don't know, on block, when people buy landed, then become the developer going to build apartments, right? So those are the things maybe you will cause landed property uh, numbers to reduce. Right, so you can see 2017, 17, 3,000 versus 300,000 for condominiums. So it has a huge gap. That's why only top 5% in Singapore, uh, those Singaporeans are a proud landed owner, right? Only top 5%. Right, when it comes to 2018, the number increased by a little bit, right? But why this number increased? Maybe they are extra additional land that push out right, to build landed, they are maybe government land sales along the way, right, or maybe they are some of the strata landed houses in a condominium projects, right, so we call this strata landed housing, right, those are also classified under this 74,000, right, so at times, you can see the number can pick up, but it will not be a lot, if you compare to apartment, I think that number is really very, very minimum, Right, so that is the supply of landed property in Singapore, right? And why limited supply? As you can see, government land sales for landed is really very, very rare. On October 2007, we have Sampawang Seaside there, right? 2007, 2008, 20 and 10. These are the very active years for government to put up government land sales for at the Sampawang Seaside because they are testing out the new envelope control guideline, right? So the very aggressively within the time frame, right? A few years, uh, like two, three years time, they really push out a lot of land parcel that uh, get developers to build landed property. So those years, we can see a lot of landed supply in the market, right? But definitely lo location is not in the city area, right? It's not even in the street uh, 19 or 28 or 13, right? We are talking about at the end of Sampawang Road there. Right, then come 2011, we have Serangoon Garden Way. This is actually one of the land that causing a lot of developers to come in. We have 16 bits, right? So this one has been developed into a house at Serangoon. Right, then after that, uh, 2011, we have Chestnut. So this is quite a strange year for GLS uh, in terms of landed property, right? Because back then, uh, the property price really are running. The landed property price are increasing very, very fast. Right, so maybe government actually put up some, some uh, land sales to build land property. So it's quite strange to have two plots of land one year after another, right? Uh, no, in the same year, just a few months uh, difference, you get two plots of land that are putting out for tender, right? And Chestnut attracted 22 bids, right? So you can imagine how hungry or how desirable that developer are going for landed GLS because it's very rare. Then after that, come 2013, we have Victoria Park and Victoria Villa, uh, which is now seated on already fully sold, and the price are ranging from 4 over million like, to 8 over million uh, in District 10, right? Then after that, 2017, we have this Parkwood Collection, Lolong One Realty Park, and now it's Parkwood Collection, right? It's a Strata Lander project, 53 units, also attracted 11 bids. Right, so you can see actually government land sales, the tender, the, the, the interested party from developer, in fact, are actually very aggressive. Uh, a lot of people are coming into to bid for the, the lender uh, in case the government come out any land 
to build landed, so which is very rare, right? So you can see, you know, within 2007 to 2017, 10 years, 10 years, we only have this much of government land sales, right? I mean, land open up for developer for tender to build landed property, only this much as compared to condominium, right? So you can imagine why landed property the supply are so rare and so limited because we don't have a lot of land that are catered to build landed property, right? So that is something uh, very unique for landed property. And, right, so what happens if government don't build land? I mean, they don't push out land to, to build landed. That means we don't have any government land sales eventually moving forward. They say we don't have, right? So where are the land to, where are, how the developer get the land to build landed property, right? So this is what I say it has to be recycled meaning they have to go and buy the older landed property right and then they redevelop the old landed property then you'll get a new landed property right so the, the number is actually just uh, remain the same or if not it can increase by a lot because sometimes the land is big enough for you to cut into a few houses right or if, if not at least one pair of semi d right then the number will actually remain there no? because we don't have extra land and if we redevelop from the old landed home, the number will not be increased by a lot, right? So this is what we call the supply has to be come from the recycled market, the existing landed houses, right? So that is how rare moving forward, the number will not be able to increase even, right? So something that maybe you want to take, uh, take note of, limited supply, right? Okay, so that comes to my first point that I'm going to share with you tonight, right? If you are going out to buy a landed property and uh, especially the old landed house, I think this is very useful for you. At least you can acquire some knowledge on the redevelopment of the landed property. I, I'm going to make it fast, right? If, if I'm going to go into a lot of all this, then it's going to be very, very dry. So I will just touch on the surface. At least you have some idea of what is called landed redevelopment. Right, normally it's four category if you are buying a landed property. Right, so the first thing I will call is actually renovation. Yeah, but you buy your old house, you are not going to do something, anything to the uh, to the expansion of the area to increase the height and so on. You just want to remain as a one story, for example. Right, then you are able to do some basic renovation like what you are doing for your HDB flat or for your condominium. Right, those things is quite straightforward. You don't have to even apply permits uh, uh, to carry out the renovation. Right, so that is the simplest uh, state of uh, red, I mean redevelopment if you are buying a landed property. Right, for example, the renovation cost for a single story house, 1,800 square feet. One story renovation, if you are going to do 100% renovation, I think it can cost you definitely more than 100,000. Right, that's a kind of cost you have to prepare if you are coming into an old house and want to re-renovate the place without expanding the area. Right, so up from renovation, it moves up to the next category I will call AMA, right, which is the additional and alteration. Right, what is the meaning of AMA? Right, I think you have heard this, this term a lot, AMA, but what is the meaning of AMA? Meaning you are going to expand this house from one story. Right, you are not going to increase the height. It means remain at one story or the most you have the attic, one and a half story. And the area that you are going to add on will not be more than 50% of, of the original GFA that you are having right now on your existing house. Meaning you are not going to expand the area by more than 50%. And you are not going to increase the height. Right, then you are able to classify your redevelopment or renovation under additional and alteration which is a and a right but why these are so important because later when i move on you understand why it is so important the difference between a and a and the next one will be reconstruction it make a lot of changes or a lot of big difference in case if your house have certain uh, restricted things that i'm going to cover right you will make a big difference uh, for those people right so as for now, a and a, you don't expand more than 50%. You don't build more than the height of, if you are one level, you've been at one level, you don't go up to two level. 
then A and A is okay, right? If not, if you want to increase the height to two story, from one story to two story, then you cannot classify your expansion under A and A. You have to apply the permit under reconstruction, right? So meaning uh, reconstruction allowed you to knock down everything, left only maybe some of the pillar, right? Or some of the wall of the existing old house. Right, then you are able to apply the status under recon. Right, so recon meaning um, some of the requirement, maybe you don't have to put in like bomb shelter. House shelter is not a requirement for recon. Right, you are able to expand some of the, the area above the car porch. Yeah, you are able to make it into a room, that kind of thing. So I'm not going to go into a lot of technical stuff. Right, but recon, recon is actually after A A, if you intend to expand more than 50% and build another story up, then you have to apply under recon. Or if not, if you want to pull down completely 100%, you pull down, then you have to go into rebuild, right? So that, these are the four categories. So when coming to rebuild, of course, you, you have to follow a new set of standard, like house shelter, all this have to be in, right? Um, a lot of things, your, your, your what call it the power supply all this has to be underground right so all the rule will apply if you come to totally rebuild right so if not then i think uh, you just have to understand a bit on the basic definitely your architect will be able to advise you or in fact your contractor your id your builder they know all this stuff right so they are able to give you some advice huh? so old house i think this is important Oh, at least you must understand what you want to do with the house that you are buying and how much costing you have to put in, right? So that's my point. And if you are going into rebuild, then something you have to be aware of. Why? On well, COVID-19, I think our Minister Lawrence Wong actually said at a press conference that construction cost is going to increase, right? So definitely, if you are a landed owner and you are going to only build one unit, I'm quite sure you have to pay much more than those developers who build many units because they have the economic of skill they don't have. Right, so definitely, I think uh, landed property um, pricing is going to get more expensive because construction cost is coming up, right? So if, in case if you are building halfway, you are using the old contracts, uh, congratulations. If you have not, then the contractor or the builder definitely is going to mark up the price. Right? So then the property will get more expensive eventually. Right? And yeah, so right now, before the price increment, you want to build a, a terrace, for example, I think minimally you have to go 1 million and above. right? And you have to bear with like 15 to 18 months of night May. Why is it night May? Right, because from the day you you you, you discuss with your architect, you talk to different uh, builders, right, to the day that you pick up, you select material, it's such a big house, man. you have two and a half, three and a half story, right, sometimes you come with a basement, right, so how much material, how much time you have to spend even to choose what material you want to use, that kind of things, right, then you will have to go down on site, I'm sure you're like very excited, Right, you definitely want to see the progress of your construction. So a lot of things, a lot of time normally will be wasted. Uh, and I think you will be under pressure as well. If the contractor never or the builder never do a good job, you might not be happy. Right, I have a neighbor actually built the roof, everything covered up nicely already. After they stay in, right, not less than three months only, the water start to pour in. Pour in, it's not leaking in. Right, so that proves that workmanship for a builder is also very, very important if you are building your own landed property. Right, I've seen many, and after building, after moving in, things start to come out, things start to surface out, and eventually this guy has to come back, builder has to come back and open up the whole roof and redo the roofing again. Right, so a lot of nightmare, a lot of mm, stress, I would say, sometimes. I think definitely you will have if you are going through a rebuilding process because the time frame is quite long, right? So that is construction things that you might have to take note, right? And uh, definitely something also you might want to take note because a lot of buyers through my years of marketing landed property, uh, some buyers really are very concerned about older estate we buy. They find that sometimes the neighbor house are a giant to you, 
right? They build very big. Then uh, they say we never go for rebuild, right? Then you'll find that, hey, a giant standing beside you, right? And everybody design will be different. It cannot be, a, it, you will not be able to get a constant uh, kind of uniform kind of look if you are in the older landed estate. No way you are able to get a uniform look because everybody has their own preference. Everybody budgets also different, right? So if you are the person whereby you enjoy a new uh, I mean, a kind of landed property, everybody are having a uniform look, then the older estate is not suitable for you. Right, you have to come to this kind of places. Right, example, name collection, Estelita Hills. Right, this is a newest conventional landed property estate that you are able to find in Singapore, the biggest, right? The number of units that are seated on an empty land and they build it up and form a new landed estate. Right, name collection is one of those. Right, and Eventually, you will have a couple of hundred units moving forward because we have a huge piece of land over there, right? So if you want something uniform and you don't want people to you stay in and next time the neighbors start to pull down and start to rebuild, you know, that kind of, uh, you don't want to go through that kind of uh, hustle, right? Then new estate, I think, is something that maybe you can look into. Why? Because everybody will be sticking to this design at least from the next 20, 30 years will never change, right? So you don't have to go through the kind of neighbor, pull down old house and build up and create a lot of noise, dust and cause damages to your house, right? The kind of thing will not happen in the new landed estate, right? And again, you will look, you will get a very, very uniform look. Uh, whereby I think the enjoyment is definitely very much different, right? So that is new landed estate. Yeah, so in case, I mean, since I'm on this slide, I just have to <laughs> highlight to every one of you, name collection is actually developed by Bukit Sampawang. And if you know Bukit Sampawang, they are a very well-known developer, not building a lot of branded high-end condo in the uh, district 1911, right? And they are also, uh, uh, have a lot of land bank for landed property. They are one of the biggest land bank uh, for landed property in Singapore, right? So to them, I think, yeah, they know the staff well. They know what buyers want through the years of experience that they have gained in building landed houses. You can see the design are getting actually much more ergonomic, right? Very modern and really it meets a lot of buyers requirement nowadays, right? So this is name collection. And the second point, right? I have completed my first point very fast. Huh? Right? The second point will be the root condition. Right, and, and this is something a lot of people are not aware, but to me, I think it's very important because I'm a driver. I think uh, the condition, the root condition outside your house is so much important uh, so that you, are, you will have to, uh, you, will, you can avoid a lot of unnecessary quarrel and so on, right? So example, this picture show you the park, uh, park at one side, only one car can pass through, right? Meaning the left-hand side are not able to park car. Right, so certain landed estate are in this kind of manner. You park one side, the other side cannot park one. If once you park, the car cannot pass through. Right, so it's very limited parking facility outside your house. Right, and then certain landed estate, you'll get this kind of white route. Both sides, you park car center, the car still can pass through. And this is something that I think if I'm going to buy uh, another landed, this is something that I want to look out for. Why? Because nowadays, the car numbers have increased. Right, every household has more than two cars minimumly, right? So imagine if everybody cars park outside and morning you want to go out at night and come back, very, very difficult and you will start to have a lot of dispute, right? Like, like this one, you see this kind of road is so narrow, right? At this, you will start to see the neighbors start to put dustbin outside to chop the parking space. Right, this is not too bad because the opposite don't have any houses. What happens if the opposite have another row of houses? Right, so both side people also put dustbin. Uh, and then um, it's so troublesome, no? you, you have to remove it and you come back, you park your car. Next day you go out, you, you drive out already, then you have to put the dustbin back there. Right, it's very, very troublesome. But that's how landed owner uh, do, right? So they, they, are, they can be sure that in the evening time when they come back, the lot is still there for them to park the car. And most of the time, dispute will start to come in when 
your neighbor are not happy with you, right? Who put the dustbin there and they say that this is actually a public route. Why are you chopping your parking seat, parking lot there, right? And it will start to come out, right? Like you can do a Google on the internet. A lot of disputes are going on between the lender owner because of parking issue, right? So I think this is something very, very true. And I want to maybe bring your memory back to the every route to chair area, right? Always appear on paper back then, but now the owner has already moved out, right? Or I don't know whether you also can remember this or not, right? But the thing actually started from what? You see? It started from a parking space outside the house. And this is how serious. It always happened, right? So you and your neighbor relationship can be spoiled because of parking issue, really. Right? So it's so important when you buy a landed property, uh, the root condition outside your house, I think, have to be wider, right? If not, if you think it's too cramped, um, that, that might affect your resale value as well, right? People are looking at all this because every lender owner, I think they have a few cars, right? Especially now people are rebuilding all the old houses, multi-generation family coming back to stay in one house, right? So some can be up to four, four to five cars, right? So we got enough space to park, right? So it become, I think, a very serious problem and even government are not able to come up with a good solution for all this problem, right? So to avoid all this, buy something that the root condition is quite favorable to you, right? But this one is a bit cramped. But if you look at the newer house, right? Again, taken at name collection, you see the, the route, the kind of route that you will be having, right? This one, you park two cars at the side center, the car still can pass through. This is something that I, I think I love the most, right? Because it really solved a lot of problems. And because of newer lender estate also, uh, affected by the URA guideline for building uh, car park, right? The entrance to the house has to be paid, right? I'm talking about inter-terrace. Because semi-D or bungalow, normally you will not have so much issue because your house is big enough, right? Your frontage is wide enough to park car outside. But the problem always arises when you are buying a terrace, a terrace, right? So right now, two units have to be enjoying the same, have to pair together for a car entrance. So with that, then we are able to free up the land outside between the gates, right? You have at least a six meter turf, right? I think that is actually a very good land for you, for the two neighbors to park their car outside the house without any quarreling, right? So that can fit in um, two cars, right? Uh, between the two neighbors. So this is one of the very good, uh, I think, initiative by government, right? So the new landed estate, you will not have any uh, gate to gate too close to each other or, or far apart, then uh, imagine if you are not paired together, you will not be able to achieve this six meter uh, area for you to park the car, in, right? So by pairing together, then you get this six meter. If you are not, if, that's why the older house got a problem parking car outside, right? You block the neighbor gate because we don't have a six meter gate uh, as per what you have seen on this picture, right? So newer estate parking is better uniformity and so on right okay so another thing if you want to avoid uh, dispute on car park if you think that this is quite serious and you want to avoid that then another good alternative is going into a strata landed housing we buy in the basement normally in the basement you have two car park lots it's your own private lots you don't have to put dustbin right you don't have to chop nobody are able to park in front of your house because that is the entrance to the basement and then to go up to your house, right? So strata landed, you are able to park two car parallel to each other. I mean, side by side to each other, right? So that gives you a very good move as compared to inter-terrace, especially the older one. If you are able to squeeze two car in, uh, normally you have to, if inside car want to come out, you must move your car before the inner car can come out, right? But for strata landed, this is not an issue. You can sleep until very late. So long as your, I mean, your wife, your, your husband want to go out already, they are able to access and drive out straight away. So, so that is something. I think when that come to car park, I think Strata has a much more convenient and practical as compared to conventional landed property, right? Unless you are having a bungalow, then it's not an issue, right? But inter-terrace will still be a problem. Uh, the inner car still, you have to shift the car before the inner car can come out, right? So 
strata lender is something that maybe you can consider. So in case if you are going into strata lender, I just want to take this opportunity to highlight to you where are the available strata lender for you to consider, right? This is one area whereby you can go and look for. It's about, I mean, it's a freehold strata lender along Amokyo Avenue 5 in Silita Hill, right? Belgavia Green, uh, freehold lender property, a freehold strata lender project, very beautifully done up, especially the architecture you can see. It's very asymmetric. It's, you have a, the, the 3D, the kind of wave, you know. Uh, so this is something that I, I really enjoy, the architecture design of the Algeria Green. So the other one, um, which is at a very superb location, because lender property normally you don't get close to MRT. Uh, this part of collection at Haogang uh, is very close to Haogang MRT station. And this is something unique whereby the house is super big. Right, because they are affected by the new ruling. Right, so these are the two projects that you can consider. And new ruling for Swata Landed oh, is a bonus to you. Just in case, if you are not aware, I just want to go through very, very fast. Right, before that, developer just had to put aside 30% to build swimming pool, to build communal, communal uh, open space. Right, 30% is enough. And that, uh, include the on-ground greenery control, right? But right now, since after 2014 August, government said, no, you need to put aside 45%. 45% for what? For the facilities, for the communal open space, right? So meaning, if you buy into a new strata lender project like Parkwood Collection, then you enjoy this benefit of having a more uh, area to enjoy, more facilities, and you will have lesser house in the project, right? Meaning you will get a bigger house. That's the reason why part of collection the house is actually really huge. Five levels fully built up and you'll get 4,500 square feet onwards, right? And the other thing that government control very tight on Shrata Lander project is a 25% set aside for greenery. Meaning when you walk into a new Shrata project like part of collection, your feel will be totally different. Why? You'll find more greenery, whereby before that, is never in control. So a lot of Trata Lander is very clamped and the house is very thin and narrow, right? But right now, it's totally changed. So it's some good news for the buyer who are looking for Trata Lander. Maybe you are able to enjoy a much bigger house for now, right, as compared to before. And because of this, uh, meaning developers are not able to build more units on the same plot of land, right? So there's the number of units is reduced, meaning their profit margin also dropped down a lot. Because imagine I, if I can build 80 units, right now I only can build 50 units. Reduction of 30 units, eh? and there's so much profit margin that I have lost as a developer. right? Because of this, and because of the high construction cost for Swata Lander projects. You know, Swata Lander, you have to build basement, you have to build facilities, and you have to build a lot of uh, communal uh, open space for enjoyment and so on. It's like you are building a condominium, right? So definitely the construction cost is going to be much higher as compared to if you are building a conventional landed property, right? And because of high labor costs and longer build time because there's a basement involved, there's swimming pool, that kind of things, right? So definitely your building time will be much longer as compared to a conventional landed property, right? So today I want to ask every one of you a question. If you are a developer and you have a piece of land to build landed houses, will you choose to build conventional or will you choose to build strata landed projects? Yeah, these are the two questions that you can think about. And because of all these elements, I'm very sure in the future, you will not be able to see strata landed projects. I'm talking about pure strata landed projects because there's no incentive for developers to build them anymore. Right. So can you still recall when government stopped executive mentioned in Singapore, right? So right now, when people love to say two-story HDB flat, they have to buy from who? They have to buy from the resale market, right? So next time, likewise for Strata Landers, well, after the last two, the next two projects, which is already gotten the approval, right? Uh, launch in the market, you will not be able to see any pure Strata Lender project anymore. Right, so whoever love to stay in this kind of hybrid between a condo and landed property, they have to buy from you, right? So limited supply. Also, maybe it's a plus point that you are able to consider for strata landed project. 
right? Then the third thing I'm going to go into is electrical supply. So when you buy your old land property, imagine if you are not going to spend money to rebuild the house, make sure you check the electrical supply. Why? Because single pop, single story land property, a lot of them actually, especially the old, old one, or for example, if you buy into Serangoon Garden, right, a lot of old single story land property, uh, I'm quite sure the electric, electrical supply are have, still having single phase, which is one phase. Or the ampere, which is the supply that come into uh, your house, is only 30 ampere, right? So 30 ampere, what can you do? You maybe can only do like four aircon. If you want to put the fifth one the, and you on them together, the circuit breaker will trip, you know? So this will actually restrict you if you need to, to enjoy a bigger, a stronger aircon, higher um, BTU then it might not be able to sustain, right? Or if not, you cannot on them together. Now you can install, but make sure you don't turn on them together. If not, the power supply, well, the circuit breaker can trip, right? Or versus the new one, normally it comes with three phase, right? Three phase, 100 ampere. So whatever thing you want to install in your house, jacuzzi, uh, the swana room, Right, whatever, how many aircon, however you want to put in, is not a problem because 100 ampere, I think, uh, there's uh, more than sufficient. So even single phase, even three phase come with 60 ampere, I think that's good enough. Right, so these are the things that you have to think now. And uh, if you are buying into an old house, most likely this electrical box will not be there, right? They are still using the old system whereby the circuit breaker or the meter are all inside the house, right? So when the... SP services come and record the meter reading. It's either you let them come in or if not, you have to take a picture, send a WhatsApp to them, right? So there's a little bit troublesome as compared to if outside, then uh, you don't have to worry about all this. You don't have to worry about it. I forget to send the meter reading to SP services, right? And all these boxes outside meaning what? If you go and buy one house and all the, we have seen this uh, electrical housing outside the gate. Uh, I think it's a good news. Because if you don't have and you want to build this, uh, you have to spend additional cost. Well, by having this, maybe most likely I will confirm that the power supply will be run underground. And that's one of the requirements for new landed housing. If you rebuild, you have to put your supply cable all going underground. The old landed property are having a hang cable, overhang cable on top, and then they run inside your house. But once the whole estate, everybody rebuilt, all this overhang cable will be gone, right? And you have the very clean cut, um, uh, very good looking landed estate by then. But it takes time, maybe another 50, 100 years later. I'm not sure. It depends on, as long as one house haven't rebuilt, then government cannot take away the, the cable pole with a cable on top, you know, right? And normally the new landed estate will not have this problem because they really all go underground and that is actually a requirement by government, right? So it will be neater in a way, right? So this is electrical supply. And the fourth point that I'm going to share with you tonight will be the landed zoning, right? Safe guarded landed area whereby you will see by all this pink color uh, uh, map on the master plan. And what is how, how this is important because if you see pink color, you are quite safe that you are staying in a safe guarded landed area. So meaning nobody are able to build a condominium beside you. So that is something I, I think I will prefer if I stay in a landed property. I own a landed property. I want my landed property. I don't want to sit beside a condominium eventually, right? So everything has to be very exclusive. And this is something that you have to be very careful because certain estate you have landed property, but the color is not pink color, it's white color, as you can see from here, right? White color, this is, for example, the Kurao area, uh, sitting beside Frankel. Frankel are all very high class, um, bungalow and semi-detached zoning, pink color. But beside Toro Kurao, after the canal, then uh, you can see a lot of land of tea in Toro Kurao as well. But what, why their map are white color and it's not pink color? Because they are classified under non-safeguarded land area, right? Milling, Right, they are having a port ratio of 1.4. If developer actually unblock the whole row of land property, big enough, you have more than 1,000 square meter of land, I am able to build an apartment up here on this plot of land. So if they say you are not the one who want to sell your land property and eventually your neighbor actually all consolidate and sell away to one developer, 
then you will have a condominium beside your house or an apartment beside your house next time. Right? So that will be the kind of uh, difference if you are buying into this kind of zoning. Right? And we call this non-safeguarded landed area. And this is how you feel. Right? Something, some apartment beside your house or opposite your house versus only landed property. Sorry. So the feel is different. Right? The exclusiveness is definitely different if you are buying into a safeguarded landed area, right? And Srita Hill is one of the very huge landed safeguarded area, right? As you can see from this map, right? And you have like two story. Now in within a landed area also, you have a different story height. Now. Even across the street, it can make a difference. Eh? Like maybe I'm staying here, I can build three story. My neighbor obviously only built two story. It can have that kind of difference. Of, so not not necessary if you are in a landed estate then you think your neighbor is three story you are also able to build three story no you have to come master plan to check how many story you are able to build right so like likewise for Sita hill for example the older Sita hill site they are able only to build two story right but when it come to name collection site you are able to build three story but they are all within the same landed uh, zoning area in Sita hill right so this is name collection and belgavia green Right, that's why they are able to have three story with a rooftop terrace, and then Bagheva Green will come with a basement. Right, and it, this here, I'm uh, the reason I'm showing you this master plan. I think I have a very strong signal. I want to put across to all of you because during the initial part, I share with all of you, we don't have GLS for landed property. We don't have right, very limited, very rare. Yeah, ten years only a few GLS. Right, and Next what developer have to buy from the existing owner, which is I call recycle, recycle the land, right? So that that's all you are able to find landed property in Singapore, right? But there are still some pocket of land whereby like this one, Silita Hill, you can see huge plot of land whereby it's not developed yet. It's still vacant, right? And all these land are passing down from the very old generation come down. Yeah. And right now, uh, uh, they are belong to, a lot of them are belong, I mean, majority of them are all belong to Phuket Sampawang, right? And part of it will be Tong In Group, right? These are the two developers having the more, I mean, the land in Silita Hill, right? Haven't developed yet. And this will be the most number of land in Singapore, whereby you will see land property to be built in the next few years. Right. I don't see another place in Singapore whereby you get such a luxury piece, uh, big plot of land. Right. Meaning you will have a lot of volume that coming into Silita Hill next time you don't land up to, and that helps. That helps in terms of the pricing if you are coming into this area. Right. Oh, so the next category, the fifth point that I want to quickly run through with you um, is the root category in Singapore. Right. As a landed owner, I think you have to be aware, landed buyer. Right, especially you must understand the root category, right? Because your land property sometimes might be funding the category that are not in favor to you, right? So why are they important? Right, first of all, I think you have to understand we have, right, five main category of root, but in fact, it's not five. I, I would say it's six, right? Because we still have some root that are not categorized, right? So total by right, we have six, but the main one, main, I think will be five. Lah. Let's say we talk about five, because some land property actually are facing the non-categorized root, uh, so that is up beside the point, right? But the main five one, you have to understand. Cat one, cat two, and three, four, five. Where are they? Especially is cat one. And those landed property inside a uh, uh, estate, uh, when you drive into your house, the small, small route, they are all cat five. And this is how you categorize. But why this is important to you? Why I want to bring up this? Because you want to rebuild, uh, right? So that's when really it can affect you one. Why? I'll show you later on. But I just want to show you how to find category on the route that you are having, right? You have to buy the route nine plan and they will tell you this route is category one, as you can see from all the circle, they have circle, right? So some of the very important one that you have to take note will be like cat two. Cat two, I think the one you really have to take note, three, four, five, maybe they are about the same, but cat two, you have to take note, why? You see, cat two, you have to set back 12 meter from your gate to the house, right? Meaning you, you your house cannot build nearest to the gate. You have to keep a 12 meter setback if your house is funding a cat two route. Or three, four, five, no problem. Your house can push all the way left only 7.5 meter to your main door. 
right? So that is the difference why you have to understand category. If you are going into a rebuilding uh, thing, then this might affect you if the root is cat2. So cat2 normally is measure root. Uh. So how to, how to understand cat2 before you buy plan, right? Just imagine this root, are they linking to an express way? You know? If this root that you are planting is eventually linked to an express way directly, then most likely that will be category two root. Uh, then you have to be careful, right? So that's how you differentiate the thing. Three, four, five, not so important right now. Yeah, so the next point six is actually root nine plan. This is also very important. If not, then you might be suffering eventually. Why? Root nine plan is also buy from government website. You spend $53.50. You're able to get this plan out from the house that you're buying. You just have to crunch the house address. You'll get this plan online, right? You don't have to go down there. And you will see a red line, on this red line, they sit on the boundary of your house, right? So that is normal, nothing wrong. It means uh, your house is not affected by root line plan. So it's normal, right? But if you buy a plan and you see something, the red line come inside your land. Uh, so this is, I will say, is affected by root line plan. And how big is the effect, uh, the affected area, then you have to get a surveyor. Right, to measure for you how much of the land is affected uh, from this root line plan. Right? And what happens if you are affected? If you're buying an old house, if you're not going to do anything to the house, then you don't have to worry for now. Never mind. Right? Because you're not doing anything. But if one day government says, I need to expand this route wider, so I'm going to collect back whatever land that are affected. You have to return back to me. I'm the government and LTA will actually acquire the land from you compulsory because I need to expand the route. But are they paying you anything? The answer is no. You will not be compensated, right? Because this is part of the non plan already in the system, right? Yet you are buying, correct? No? So they will not compensate you for any single cent. Yeah. So if you are not going to redevelop the house, nothing to worry until one day LTA need to expand the, the route, then you have to surrender. If not, then if you are going to do some reconstruction, well, remember the four categories? So the third category, reconstruction or rebuild status onwards. If you are going to do this, then government LTA need you to surrender the land right now, even though I'm not expanding the route, you have to surrender the land to me, right? Since you are doing a rebuilding process, I am going to get the land back first, right? So this is how it will happen. This owner actually has done some reconstruction to the house, right? And this house are affected by Route 9 plan because it's planting a cat tree, very busy route, right? There's a reason one day government might need to expand the route because this route is too busy already, right? Cat tree is quite a major route. And once you do a recon of the house, the land surrender, your boundary, your gate all have to push back until the red line, the plan that I show you earlier on. So this is how it can affect, affect you. And you can see from the side front view, right? Why do I say they, they really done some reconstruction? You can see the house is it actually was looked like this before. After they reconstruct, they face deep and they do a lot of expansion at the back and so on. So it's classified under recon, it's not an a, &A. If a, a you don't have to return the land, you're still able to use the land, right? There's a reason why I, from the start, I really tell you four categories, but they are a very important thing because this is part of the thing that you have to look out for, right? So once you are into a recon status, then the land you return, you cannot I mean, the, it's not belong to you anymore, but definitely if government haven't used, you are able to park your car outside, yeah, versus this neighbor. You see the gate is still outside here because they have not done anything to their house yet. So they don't have to return the land to LTA until one day LTA need to expand the route, right? So that's a really different and it's modern for route my plan that I, I think is important, right? Very important. Right, if not, I mean, if your house is gonna the route night plan, your valuation definitely will be affected, right? And the number seven, which is also very, very critical for an old house. New house, no problem, right? Manhole, right? And IC. IC stands for inspection chamber, right? So they are of this kind of shape, rectangle, right? So what's the dimension? 
650 by 500. These are standard IC size. And if you see this thing sitting inside your house, sometimes it's not so critical, right? Because you are able to shift this anyhow, and it's not going to be very expensive, right? But the important thing is this one, right? Manhole. And manhole is something normally come in round shape, but it also can be square shape, right? But more, most of them are round and sure. Well, there's a word sure, right? So with this, and normally it has a depth, so it's very deep actually because it, this is a place where by a lot of people to go in to do inspection if anything happened to the sewer line underneath, right? That's why we call manhole, right? So the dimension is about, I think, uh, I can't remember the radius, but uh, but why this is important? Because if you see this thing, uh, then you have to be careful. Why? Because you will cause a lot of restriction and definitely I tell you, your construction cost is going to increase. And the increment can be a lot, you know, it can be a few hundred thousand. It depends on the shiver line, how big and how deep underneath, right? Why do I say that, right? Because you have to build this thing, right? This is a shiver setback plan, right? Imagine your, your shiver line is underneath, uh, right? So they, you must have a clearance of one meter you know, from this shiver line, right? You cannot build anything here. So that will, definitely affect your building plan. Imagine you want to build something here and because of this uh, rule that say that you cannot build here because of the manhole, the access point has to be there, right? And that is inside your land. Then uh, your, your plan has to change. You cannot build something above the manhole to cover it because at any time, the uh, POB people might need to come and assess the uh, sewer line if anything wrong. Right, so that's one thing that you have to take note. The house structure can be affected because of the manhole location, right? It might actually de deviate from your original plan. That's something I think is really critical. The other thing is you have to build trend, RC trend, which is concrete uh, reinforcement, concrete, right? As a protection for the drain drainage or the sewer line, you must protect it with this RC trend, right? And that is something I will say the additional cost. You build, after that, you have to cover it up just to make sure the thing is being protected and you are, you are not going to use them anymore, right? So you throw money, it's like you throw money to the drain, right? If your house happened to have a sewer line, then definitely additional cost for your construction because all these things, uh, it, it takes money to build all this. And um, if your sewer line is really deep, deep inside, your cost can be very high. I have a customer actually because of this, uh, their original plan to build a very beautiful house uh, has to be deviated from there because they cannot afford another 300 over thousand to build this protection. Uh, they just find that it's not worth it, right? So if you happen to go into an old house whereby you have a very big backyard, sometimes you thought that you are able to expand your house uh, backwards, right? So that you can get a very big build up area, right? But be careful if you have a sewer line at the backyard, um, that will increase your construction cost. And uh, sometimes it can be unforeseen, right? So that's why buying an old house sometimes is a bit risky because of all these technical things that you are not aware and uh, eventually it busts your budget and you have to go another plan B and plan B might not be the best plan for you to build the house in the kind of design that you want, right? So definitely you will not be happy and emotionally I think you'll be affected as well, right? So these are the things that I think you have to take note uh, when buying a old house, right? Additional cost to build. Yeah, so you see this picture show you, this is the, let's say this is the cover right of the sewer, then within here, you are not able to build anything, you know. Right, so your building plan can deviate from there because of this uh, manhole cover, right? You have to detour. So eventually your shape of the house or, or the desire of the layout that you want might not be able to achieve, right? So there's something maybe uh, it's good to know, right? At least you know how, what to look out for when you want to buy an old house. Right, so in case if you are not going into this kind of trouble, don't want to take this kind of risk, this kind of stress, right, then buy a brand new landed home. I think it's one of the best choice 
Why? Because everything developer already settled for you. Whatever they need to settle, they settle for you. You just have to look out for your house that you want, you love it, you feel it, you touch it, you think, yes, it's suitable, uh, comfortable, then price is okay for you. Go for a brand new one. I think that will save you a lot of headache, right? You don't have to face, uh, sometimes you get the wrong builders, uh, sometimes you get the wrong architects, sometimes you have to overpay for something. Uh, then a lot of hidden costs will start to pile up. I'm very sure you will have hidden costs on for landed property building, right? Because it's a very long process, one and a half years. Definitely along the way, your idea change, your material change, your design change, that are all additional costs, right? So come to brand new house, you'll solve all this issue, right? So in case if you are coming into the market to look out for new landed property, what do we have right now in the market? More like what I shared with you earlier on, a strata landed project, freehold, Belgavia Green, right? And uh, I think this is something very unique. You know why? Because Singapore, I think moving forwards, this will be the second last biggest strata lender project that you are able to see, right? Second last for freehold, right? So freehold strata, big plot of land, I think it's not easy to come by. I can guarantee you, right? Don't have one, you go and check the whole Singapore. And one of the very important criteria to buy a strata lender project is the land size has to be big enough to build enough facilities. Right, so and Belgavia Green offer you this kind of luxury, and that's the reason why in last year this is one. This is in fact the only best strata lender project, uh, best seller I would say. Right, left only the last two units. As you can see from here, house two three one and two three nine and two four one. Last two semi detached house, four thousand and four square feet, spent over four and a half story. Right, I think that kind of size you can imagine and uh, the takeaway is very fast and people see the value in freehold strata. Why? Because it's still below $1,000 per square foot. Imagine a 99 years today in those condo projects, there's some lender property, they are selling at $1,100 over dollar per square foot. And now you're buying a freehold for $1,000 below $1,000. I think that's something a lot of people see the potential and they really like this kind of living environment whereby you can enjoy the facilities at the same time, you will have 24 seven security guard, right? So there's something conventional lenders are not able to offer, right? So you can maybe get those people who invited you for this seminar, get in touch with them because this one, we have a show flag to show you. So you really can walk in and feel the house for yourself and find out why this one become the best selling project in 2019, right? For freehold landed and the next one will be Pau Collection. Uh, this is one of the very, very first Strata Lender project that built under the new ruling. So if you want to know what's the difference between the new rule and the old rule, uh, then you can visit the two projects, uh, Belgavia and Parkwood. But Parkwood is a 99 years project, right? Um, beside the least 99 year this whole, I think they have uh, many other good advantage, like bigger, the room, or just imagine your master bedroom is as big as a one bedroom condo right now in the market. You know? It's the kind of size. So, so if you are a person who go for size and want the convenience of near MRT, near shopping mall, right? Park collection maybe is something that you can visit. And this one maybe we uh, just started selling not long, right? You still have plenty of choices. But if we are going for our star by unit, then I have to tell you, we only have the last one unit for the star by. Right, all the rest are all much higher price and a lot of buyers come in, they go for star buy because they find that it's actually a great saving, right? And this one, we have two swimming pools, 50 meter, 60 meter pool, right? So there is something as a result of new ruling, you get a better facilities, right? And you get a bigger house. The benefit all pass down to the buyer, right? So part of collection, okay? And the next one, I'm going to share with you, Shrata Lender, a lot of people think that it might not be a good, Class, uh, a good type of land property to invest in, but I think uh, sometimes it's not accurate at all. Why? Because it really have we have history not long from 2014 to 2017. This type of houses, uh, the price actually appreciated much faster and higher as compared to conventional land property, right? So it also has the kind of audience, you have that kind of potential, you have that kind of. Uh, uh, demand, I will say, because it's a different category of lender property and some buyer really love this style of property, right? And, right, this is some of the report, uh, 2004 to 2008, actually freehold cluster house 
run faster than the rest of the three categories of landed property. And 2009 to the second half of 2013, 99 years Rata lender run faster than the rest of the three categories of landed property. Right. That's why it proves that this category really are able to attract buyer as well. Right. Good. So the last one I'm going to, I have two more slides only. Name collection, conventional landed. Right. This is something very unique. Why? Because landed property very hard. You will get a unit facing the park. And the whole park is so long from CTE to Yuchu Kang Road. Having a 100 meter width park. It's not a very small park. It's a huge park like Bishan Park, the kind of land, you know, linear park. Right, and this one will connect directly to the Yuchukang Gerald Drive Park Connector. You can run all the way to Pongo from your Amokyo Avenue 5 house. Right, so that is that kind of uh, uh, luxury or, or the kind of lifestyle that you can get in Pao Collection, uh, in Lim Collection, right? And, right, very sellable. Also left last three units. The last two corner terrace and one detached house. And if you can see from here, this unit house number 62 is facing the park. This is a linear park, it's a huge park. All right. And that will be the kind of feel that you can get from MIM collection. Last unit, right? And it comes with ID. Wow. You don't have to worry about ID there. Developer already make get a designer, design the whole house, put in all the features and fitting for you. Right? So that is name collection and the layout. I love it a lot, right? I really encourage if you have the intention to buy a landed property, come to name collection, contact any of our Propnex agent who invited you. Because I want you, I want you to see something that I call clever architecture design. Right, this is my by W Architect, right? Uh, the man behind the firm was uh, White. Why? Right, I, I think he really got a lot of experience, and this one of the house that I love the most in terms of the architecture build up, really, especially the cross wing, the cross wing uh, structure that that is very hard to find in all the land property that I've seen, right? But you are able to see in part uh, name collection. So do uh, contact our agents, right? Uh, make appointment with them, come in. This house already POP. So if you buy into name collection now, you can move in already, right? So if you are in a hurry to look out for a place to stay, you don't want to rent any more, come, park, uh, come name collection. The last unit that are facing the park is waiting for you. This is one of the, my favorite unit also. Very nice interior on the outlook of the house. Number 62, name terrace. Look at interior. All these things that you see here, you will be getting if you buy this house, right? All the top notch, top end, high end, all imported from Italy, a lot of that sofa, the skin, you know, the uh, of the sofa is really, really very fine. And uh, you sit here, you can really fall asleep very fast. Too comfortable, really, right? This kind of furniture all come with it. And imagine when you do the cooking, you can enjoy the park view. It's totally unblocked. So definitely this house is very nice, right? Something that very rare, in landed property, right, facing a very huge park, park. That's why from your master bedroom balcony, you look down, this is the kind of privacy unblocked view that you will be getting. Can you imagine, right? The park haven't done up yet. It's belong to, I mean, developer have to hand over to M Park, M Park take over, right? And it will be zoned under park. So nothing can be built on here. You don't have to worry, right? So this will be the, will be the view you can get from your master bedroom, right? Then uh, everything, bed, all the bed, all the bed furniture, the bedroom furniture, curtains, everything, lightings, all fit in ready, right? So this is truly a most in condition house. You just have to bring your luggage, whatever, maybe your old furniture. If you don't want, you can actually don't have to bring, right? This house have a brand new furniture and this one just put in before the circuit breaker, right? So it's still brand new. Uh, it's like two and a half, three months old only in terms of the finishing, right? So you can come in to take a look, have a feel if you do want to, uh, if you are looking for a landed property, right? So just do a little bit of recap from my sharing today, right? First thing I share with you, the landed, the four category of landed redevelopment. I think that is important in a recon and rebuild, right? Beside the renovation, right? Then the root condition is something useful, something important because that can enhance your resale value next time. Really buyer are looking into all this, right? and electrical supply, right? If you are buying an old house, this is something that you have to take note, 
zoning, right? Two story, three story, whether you can build apartment or cannot build apartment, safe or non-safe, I think this one makes a difference, right? Root category, five category of root, right? If not six category, because there's actually a non-category root and root nine plan, right? Whether you are funding a main root, anything cat three and above, you better check root nine plan because the high chance you are able to be affected by root nine plan if the root is too busy, right? And manhole and IC, right? That if you are buying them something that uh, you have to take note because that can affect your plan and incur additional costs if you are going into rebuilding, right? So these are the seven things that I have shared with you. And I find that personally, based on my experience, when I am looking for landed property, these are important to you because when I first buy landed property, nobody teach me all this, right? So I hope my sharing today are able to add value to all of you out there in case if you are buying landed property, you know what to look out for, right? So today, if you are not going to buy your old house, you want to come into a new landed project, right? Built by renowned developer, then, I really want to invite you to attend this open house tomorrow, right? The three projects that I have shared with you, if you, because of COVID-19, uh, because of circuit breaker, you don't want to go to physical house, what I can suggest is you come into our open house tomorrow. It will be a virtual open house. We will walk you through the exact unit uh, as you are in a show flat, that kind of experience. And in case if you really love it, then make an appointment with our agent and you can go down to visit the physical show flat. I think that will help you to cut short your time because within an hour, within one and a half hours, you are able to see three projects. But if you travel there, definitely you are not able to finish within one and a half hour or one hour for three projects, right? And you are watching the open house at the comfort of your house. I think that's something uh, technology are able to help us and we are doing it very well during the circuit breaker period. Right now, right. So the timing will be tomorrow, 8 p.m. And uh, ask the link from your agents that who are invited you here. Uh, then you are able to enjoy the open house over uh, at, at your home, right? So with that, I think I'm going to end my sharing today. I take, I think, roughly about one hour plus a bit. I hope I really add value. And uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. And I hope to see you tomorrow also, right, for our open house. Thank you very much. Thank you. All the best. Right, so do we have any question? Let me see. Yeah. Where can you find? Uh, okay, I don't know whether anybody really answered the question, but I saw some question like here 4,004 square feet is built up or land size. So for strata lender, it's like condominium. We will not go by land size. We are going by the build-up size. That is, that's why it's called strata lender. There's a strata element in this particular lender. Uh, but your title will be under strata lender, actually. Right. So 404 is against the build-up area, right? And um, where can you find a land zoning? You can go to URA master plan. Right, you key in your address and then after that you search for landed housing zoning, landed housing area, then the pink color will appear. If you don't see pink color and say you see white color, meaning uh, that is something that is a non-safe guarded landed area, then uh, apartment can be built beside you next time. If yeah, we do have. Then I own a free whole single story terrace. If I intend to sell about 10 years later, should I renovate? I think it's up to you. If you have if you already stay there and uh, it's enough space, uh, and if you're looking to sell next time, 10 years later, sometimes a single story house is easier to sell than a fully built up house if you ask me why. Because a lot of developers want to buy from you because they can, they can tear down and build a new one and then resell it with some profits, right? And if you are going to build yourself, uh, Yes, once because every single story house, once we build, your valuation will increase, right? You will have you can sell based on the new valuation price, right? So if you do a calculation of your value now as a single story versus you add on, tamba on the construction cost, and then you check with the bank of the new valuation price. If the new valuation price is much higher than whatever you add on construction cost and your present valuation, 
then it works. I think it makes sense for you to do a rebuilding, right? In case if you are not staying, you can sell it with a profit. If not, then uh, you can continue to stay. You will save on the construction cost because 10 years later, definitely the construction cost is going to be much higher, right? So that's my opinion. And uh, yeah, maybe you can take it from there, right? So it very much depends on your requirement, right? Uh, if you raise the ceiling height by 30% but still one story, if it's still one story, then you will not, you will still classify under a, a so long as you don't go more than 50% of your GFA. Right. Okay. Hmm. Anything? I have a budget of 2.5 million for a landed property. I'm having difficulty deciding between a 99 years, a 99 years of freehold, as well as between strata landed. Hope to get some advice. I think this is a very subjective uh, question, right? So first of all, I think you have to ask yourself, what is your intention of buying this landed property? Are you going to buy, stay after your kids grow up? Then you might want to upgrade to a bigger unit if there's a chance, right? Or are you going to buy, hold, and pass down to the next generation, right? So these are the thing, a pointer whereby it will help you to decide whether which kind of property you should go for, right? Because for, a, for example, a 2.5 million, you go for a freehold or triple nine, you might not be able to get a new house. Most likely maybe a two-story old house, still possible in certain area, Right, and, but the kind of living environment will be very much different as you compared to you are in a newer house, right? So the quality of staying definitely will be affected as if you compare the two types. Uh, uh, beside the tenure, right? I'm talking about the new one and the old one, uh, a 2.5 million budget that you can get one. Uh, toilet, you might not have all the room got toilet, then, uh, then the ceiling height might be different. The house might not be very well uh, littered up because of the arch architectural design. It will be very dark, especially if you're getting an inter terrace and you will not have the crosswind kind of thing. So certain period of the year, I'm very sure it's very stuffy because that is my own experience that I have gone through, right? It's very stuffy, it's very hot and um, and sometimes it will make you pick chick, uh, right? So, so I mean, as, as, as long as you, if you are saying like 200 million, 3 million to buy a house, definitely we want to enjoy right, beside the capital appreciation, or you, you want a better quality of staying and so on, right? So that will make you decide whether should you go for a 99 years or a freehold. Because triple nine and freehold, I think is about the same as per now, unless a few hundred years later down the road, it might make a difference, but there's still very long way to go as long as for now, I think valuation for triple nine uh, in the whole Singapore, you still have minimum 800 over years, right? So that is long enough to classify as the same valuation as freehold. If I, I mean, uh, based on my experience, so you'll not be affected by now, right? So to me, uh, strata lender or conventional, it all depends on your kids. It, do they need all these facilities? Or do they need the twenty four seven security guard? Or not? Right. So that will make it different. I have buyer come to strata lender and tell me, Jeep, I am not going. I have a lot of money to buy a bungalow even." But I'm not going for uh, conventional and why? Because I need the 24-7 security guard. And that's why I come here, right? Because I travel a lot and I am not uh, fancying for my kids to really, uh, you know, out there and I'm not in town, right? So we really have this kind of buyer there, right? So I'm, I'm sure every type of property have their own demand, have their own, own target or audiences. But more important thing, you, you have to ask yourself, what is the objective, right? Will you want to pay something, a premium, to buy a freehold, whereby you are not going to hold a property for long, for example? No need to go for freehold. You get me now? Because freehold, people buy freehold, they might thought the freehold is uh, free to hold. Uh, I want to pass down to my next generation. And uh, freehold, the price are able to go up faster. Right, I'm able to make money from freehold rather than 99, but I can prove you wrong. But today I don't have time, but I have a lot of data to prove you a lot of 99 years and the owner. In fact, they are also making profits, right? So important is your strategy. So what is a strategy? I think my agent, although I'm not my agent, I mean those 
Propnex agent I talked to last. Those Propnex agent that invited you here, they are all trained with all the data to prove to you that 99 years landed owner are making money. But important thing is actually where they buy, when they buy, when they sell. Right, so those are important things I think we have to ask ourselves. Well, today, if you want to save our money to buy a brand new freehold and property, we might not be able to reach the target that we want. You know. But while we are saving, the lender property price being a freehold of 99 years keep moving up. That's something I think that we are not able to catch up anymore if we continue to wait further. Right, so that's the opinion that or the advice that I want to share with all of you here. Right, 10 years ago and 10 years now, so much different. And then the property price will continue to climb. Why? Because we don't have any supply anymore. It will definitely have to climb one, right? Compared to the numbers of condominium that you can see in the market right now, London is a very small fraction of it, right? So I hope I answer your question objectively. I think we have to ask ourselves and talk to your agent that invited you here also, right? Okay, do I answer all the question? Is it worth to buy a 99 years lender property like Westview or Ferdi and View? Right. Look at the, the price trend. I think uh, this one you really have to talk to your agent, right? I don't have any data to show you. Um, yeah, but uh, all these are more than 20 years old lender property. If you are able to get something uh, good buy, yes, I think um, from 2013 to now, uh, some unit buy, the price might have came down for the older lender property. And uh, we do have some data to prove to you people who buy into a 20 over years old, 99 years lender property are making a lot of profit when market queue up. Right, so it will still have the market, but it haven't reached the critical year yet. Once it reached the critical year, then it can affect the valuation a lot than those I might not advise you to go for, right? So something 20 plus year is still uh, doable because I have some result to prove to you those owners are still making money, some of them, right? So when they buy, when they exit, is I call the strategy. If you really want to buy 99 years landed, right? So something uh, to let you consider. May I know rectangular and round manhole? Yeah, so long as they are manhole, they are the same, right? So, but most of them are round. Uh, rectangle, not many. Square, yes, I saw a lot, right? Rectangular are all I see, the majority of them. And this is the bigger piece. If you see dimension 650 by 550, by 500, I think those are, by 450, those are I see, right? So don't have to worry. Okay, I have answer live. Uh, okay, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I like Sampawang Hill. Oh, yeah. Sampawang Hill is also one of the areas that have transacted many units back then. Uh, yeah, it's a nice place, um, but uh, we don't have new project in Sampawang Hill, right? You might have to look from, from the resale market. I, I'm sure you do can find something there, but be aware of the root condition in Sampawang Hill, right? Because some of the area there already, the route are very narrow, and there's something uh, even cloudy set. Go in, you cannot come out. Very difficult to come out, right? So something you might want to take note. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Okay, so I think I have answered most of the question. Right. And uh, okay, I think that's all for today. Right, so who do I pass, pass my the mic over to uh, the host. Hi, Jim. Thank you for answering all the questions. And I think it's a very uh, informative webinar itself. Hope everybody have a good takeaway. Main thing, uh, tomorrow open house, like what Jim mentioned, uh, three units within one and a half hour, we can explain everything. So hope to see you all tomorrow. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Bye. See you tomorrow.